we were together, it's never happened. It's hard to put in words. It's incredible. I don't know how I did it. How he was able to handle himself. It's been a long journey. Four years, it's, it's ridiculous. And I just remember the first day of practice. I always had the tennis racket in my hand since I was probably four or five. I have a brother, Adam, who's a year and a half older than me, and also Cyrus, who's five years older than me, so I was always chomping at the bit, telling my dad and mom that I want to get out there, I want to play, I want to play, Cyrus is playing, because you always want to be like your older brother. I think it all stems from my mom. She just dropped us off at a tennis club and was like, you guys are playing tennis because that's what I want you to aspire to be. Lenora, you know, was really the person that was bringing the kids to camp. They'd get in that station wagon and you know, all the kids would file out and, and then when they'd get picked up, you know, it would be the first one. For the first year I argued with her, I said, why are we getting them involved with, with tennis? We gotta get them into basketball, we can get them in football, there's no cost involved here. We tried out basketball, lacrosse, soccer, we played pretty much any sport imaginable, just tried them out and tennis is the one that stuck. During the summer, my parents would be at work and, and we'd have nothing to do all day, so we'd play basketball games. And Cyrus and his friend, who were probably four or five years older than us, we would just have to score 10 points and they would have to score 100. We would never win, actually. The one time we won, uh, we actually cut the nets down. <laughs> Most of the times, I ended up with, you know, Harry crying and walking inside and my dad yelling at me or Adam. He's the most competitive guy out there. He can't stand losing. After a match when he was younger, hearts are laid out on the court. Adam like managed to pull out a three-set victory over Harry, and Harry <laughs> would not shake his hand. Harry laid down on the court, was crying, just would not come off the court. And like my dad was sitting there, he was just like, Harry. If you care this much about this sport, the next time you could spend more time on the on the tennis court and he says, Dad, I will. Don't you ever think I won't. I will. I'll guarantee you that. That's kind of what started my journey. And, and looking back on it, I don't think my mom and dad had any clue like what they were getting into. Probably started playing more seriously with practices and lessons when I was, I'd say, six. And then tournament started when I was eight. Eight years old, nine years old. Got shorts, high socks, and what I distinctly remember is that he always wanted to hit volleys. And, you know, for someone that young, you know, you just don't see that. He always wanted to play tennis at the highest level that he could. He went to um, Palm Street, California when he was 14. He finished up 30 in, in the nation at that time. I could barely get up to make it to first period in high school, and Harry's getting up to go to the MAC to work out before going to class in the morning. I was up at 4.30 and I could not sleep. I could not sleep, I was so excited. And he was winning, I mean, he was doing really well. And I was very fortunate to, to see him win, you know, his uh, first state championship. <laughs> I always knew that he was the best athlete on the court. And that probably comes from me playing, playing basketball with my brothers. He still can't beat me when I won in basketball, so there's still that. <laughs> In high school, just came across some really tough times. My sophomore year of high school, my mom was diagnosed with Alzheimer's, and her specific type of Alzheimer's affected was her language and, and comprehension, so she lost her job, got laid off, and my dad actually went over to Afghanistan to serve in the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers and uh, just to make up for the money that was lost. So when I lost a match, it was I would go bonkers. I would lose my mind. I would fall into a depression. It was, it was so much. I would always feel like I was letting her down every time I lost. Coach was heavily recruiting him when he was in, in high school, you know, but one time he came in to watch him play, and that day Harry was really struggling, and he saw Harry's behavior. He would kind of break rackets every now and then or get point penalties on the court. He looks at me, he's thinking, I mean, this guy's a punk. This guy doesn't, this guy doesn't respect the game, you know. He's out here yelling, cursing on the court, doing everything. How he handled his emotions on the court. Uh, really wasn't what I was looking for for a program. And coach really got a, sh uh, a shock that what kind of an attitude he has and how will be I will be able to control him, you know. Eventually I told him I didn't have a spot for him. He called me that he was going to come to Michigan State and walk on. It's like, wow, anybody can walk on. He was talking to other schools that, you know, he might have been able to get a full ride to. He wanted to stay close to home, uh, help out with my mom and everything. At the end, his heart was at Michigan State, and he saw an opportunity to play Division I tennis, and he took it. 
So he walks on, he, he wins the walk, walk on tournament and all that. First match that I saw Harry on court, he had a tough loss. He punched his racket and his hand was bleeding and he was really frustrated. It wasn't until after he got his opportunity here that I started learning about his family situation. I feel like he kept everything inside. You know, he didn't show a lot that, you know, you know, something happened with his mom. I would have never found out because he never made it obvious that something was going wrong. Then I realized, explained everything. You know, what was going on in his life when he was a sophomore, when he was a junior, and how he was handling it. For me, it was more than a game. It, re it was a representation of what my mom wanted, and that would make me go crazy on the court. I'm talking about nuts. I have some scars on my knuckles from punching my racket when I miss a shot. My, my fist would be, ble be bleeding, and I would still be out there playing the, playing the match, but it became more than a game to me at that point. But it was never against someone else. It was always, it was always he was fighting against himself. Coach O sees me acting crazy on the court, and he doesn't see the, the personal aspect of it where I, I just feel like a lot of pressure to, su to succeed in tennis. I think if I was known up front when I went about recruiting Harry, uh, I might have had more of an, an understanding, more of uh, you know, a different you know, look on how I'd go about it. But I got a second chance because he was going to walk on. And you know how he handled the emotions? Uh, I probably would have handled the exact same way. We've got a sign in the locker room that's the green line and then as soon as you walk over the green line, try to be all about tennis and try to focus on tennis and I think that's a tough challenge for Harry with everything that was going on with his mother. And when he came to college it was a chance for him to change. You know, it's a new life, it's a, it's a new start. Coach told him, if I see a negative behavior on the court, if you mouth off on the court, you will be sitting on the bench. Harry understood exactly what coach expectations were and since that I have never seen Harry uh, misbehave on the court or uh, be negative. Sometimes you can tell that he's angry on the court now, but he's not expressing it in like a physical manner. Just tried to work my hardest, tried to really make the most of what Coach O gave me and, and do right by him because he stuck his neck out there by giving me a chance to be on this team. Having that support system, that's what's really helped me in my journey. My dad is unbelievable. He came to this country with $100 in a briefcase and He's made himself to support us and put us through college. Sometimes we were struggling to be able to make it to tennis tournaments or pay the tournament fees, but that was never an issue. You know, they were gonna find a way to make it possible for us to be the best tennis players and the best athletes that we could be. Me and my dad would go on trips and he had this Chevy Trailblazer from the 90s and he'd take out the back seat and we'd just have a bed in the back and we'd sleep there just to save money on, on, uh, on hotel rooms because we were traveling so much and we didn't really have the money. With all the trouble he's had with my mom, he really stuck through it. He showed Harry that, hey, maybe you get, get dealt uh, not the best, best hand of cards, you can still make the best out of it. He loves tennis more than anybody I've ever known. Like it is for me, it's a relief for him as well. You know, he puts on the green and white just like we do. Him knowing how hard Harry worked to get there, he wanted to be the biggest supporter that he could for Harry. For me, vacation is on the tennis court. That's the time that I'm away from my worldly problems. And I saw what happens in basketball, what happens in football, so I thought tennis needs some, some excitement. I told Harry I want to yell and all that. First time he said, Dad, don't do that, it doesn't look nice. So, so I said, okay, but I got a little excited at the match and then people were clapping and yelling and the other players really liked it and uh, I got a request from Harry, Dad, the team wants you to come next time again. I don't even know how he still has a voice. I think he's the biggest contributor to us having the loudest fan base in the Big Ten. I mean, when he walks in the building, you know he's in the building. He comes in with his, his big Michigan State flag, he's waving it around. He comes out on the court a lot of times, walks around with his flag, waving it around, yelling, it's go green, go white chance. And then he goes up behind the, ba the balcony, behind the court, and he's waving that flag over that thing, trying to get in the opponent's heads. I was sitting there and I was just like, oh my God, I don't know who this guy is, you know, because I was like kind of embarrassed at first. Because, <laughs> you know, you go to a tennis atmosphere, it's always stuffy and like, People are quiet and everything. They see a 57-year-old man, you know, going crazy, you know, so they kind of like it. For my dad, it's really, it's a, it's a lot more than a game for him. It's everything. He gets lost in it. Now it is more uh, stress reliever for me. I go, fans have fun, kids have fun, and, and our team does better. When his dad's there cheering and waving the flag and, and giving the big go-greens out, out the back, I think Harry just kind of 
feels at home there and his, his dad's supporting him. He's no, he knows he's got family and his father right behind him. Before we were leaving for spring break, I got a phone call, you know, Saturday morning and says, you know, I just can't leave. You know, and, and uh, you know, I can't leave my mom. He mentioned to me that his mom was going, it was in hospice, and then instantly a red flag, I'm thinking, wow, this is, this is the last step. I said, I totally understand, and, you know, hey, just let us know, or we'll, you know, we'll try to get you down there if, if it works out. If not, you're in our thoughts and prayers, and we'll, we'll be, uh, we'll see you when we get back. And, you know, I think on Monday he said he was, he was ready to come back. He really just wanted to be with the team and really thought that my mom would want him to kind of be on the tennis court and I think that was really a way for him to kind of express his emotion. Cyrus and I kind of talked to him and we said, you know, do what you need to do and, uh, you know, we're always here for you. We support anything you do um, and our mom will always be proud of you. Doing what my mom would want me to do is go out there and just compete your hardest. And don't worry about wins and losing. Don't worry about doing it for her because she knows, she knows that, that I'm doing the best I can. And uh, so he caught up with us back in Austin on Monday and then his mom passed away on Tuesday. My mom had Alzheimer's for eight, nine years. It was, it was a huge journey and, and, and it was probably the biggest, most defining event of my life. She would always like go up to the TV and say like Harry, Harry when when Novak Djokovic was playing because she thought she thought I was that guy. She thought I looked like him. I want him to learn from his experience. But if any time we have a, a nice heart to heart talk, we talk because what we did as a family, you know, is all because of her. <laughs> I remember sitting on the sidelines with them, and you know trying to keep it together. I was just trying to keep my head on straight. My mom had died. I was just afraid that I was gonna lose my mind on the court. He took about an hour to himself, and after that he came back with, with, with the, the same energy, the same, um, the same focus that, he, that he's had all the time. It was pretty incredible that even when he was going through all these time, hard times, he still had us in the back of his mind. And then, you know, we kind of rallied the troops, and the team came back Friday night, and the whole team was there on Saturday at the, at the service. That was a very emotional day for, for everyone on the team, and uh, obviously especially him and his, uh, his family. The pastor sp says a few words on Lenora, but then Harry, you know, speaks for the family and, uh, and just delivers. We all made our way to a hug with him, and, and he just started breaking down. It was tough to, tough to see him like that. I think that was the moment when we, we could really tell how, how hard it has been on him and how, how, how much he did for his mom, how much his family did for his mom. The way they've supported me, you know, had my back, be willing to talk to me. And also, they treat me like it was any other day. And that's one thing that I really appreciated is because it gets old having people say, come up to you, say, I'm sorry for your loss, stuff like that. You just want to kick back and, and hang out and get a release from it rather than being reminded of it. It takes commitment. It takes family support, and it takes uh, coaches' help too, you know, to keep him level-headed, because you go through through so much emotion and all that. It was about us being a family, and uh, you know, I think that's really what, what it's all about. You wake up one day, and your mom starts acting funny, and then you go to the Mayo Clinic, and they say it's Alzheimer's. And uh, I mean, you don't have that long playing on a tennis court. You don't have that long walking on this earth. So go out and go do it and go, go do it the best you can. The day that we played Penn State was the match that was dedicated to um, to Harry's mother. We knew we had a lot to do with the Big Ten season just starting up, but we're just coming off spring break. We're coming off a loss. We're coming off, you know, a player losing his mom. And we all wanted to win so badly for uh, for Harry and his family. We wanted the guys were even, you know, saying, "Hey, coach, what can we do for 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 the Jadens?" One of the suggestions was was having a T-shirt, you know, a special shirt made up with from Nike, Sparty had in the middle with, with her initials, and now uh, we had some shirts already set. Leading up to the match, we uh, were kind of kind of nervous, kind of tense because we didn't know how how we would handle um, ourselves. We didn't know how Harry would handle himself. Playing an outdoor match you know, on March 20th, and 
you know, playing, finishing underneath the lights. It was all my friends, all my family. Uh, they came out to that match. Just to see those guys, the fans and friends, the, they, they, they walked the journey with them too. It was a match that was a lot of give and take. You're up, you're down, you're up. I lost the first set and I was killing my, like, this is the match dedicated to your mom. You have to win this match. Sports psychologist guy, Scott, who comes in, he came in, he was on my court and he talked to me a little bit. He said, Harry, just relax, just play your game and you gotta trust that everything's gonna work out. I, I would always say to myself before every point, it's not a tennis match. You're just out there playing backyard basketball with your brothers. You know, this is just, this is just another backyard brawl. This is what you grew up doing. The way it ended, storybook ending with uh, Harry winning the deciding match, 7-5 in the third, after getting a point penalty, uh, Phenomenal, phenomenal match. We all stormed the court and um, picked him up. I think he threw his shoes after that, threw his racket, and then he had a flag running around the court. His first reaction was to just throw everything out, throw his racket away, throw his shoes, out, shoes off. I don't know how he handled that pressure of having that match dedicated to him. I still get chills down my spine from winning that Penn State match. Fans usually don't come out on the court, you know, and, and everyone knew how much of an emotional match it was, and everyone you know, felt special that day. It was the sweetest victory I, I've ever been a part of uh, in, my, in my team, in my college career, but also in my uh, individual career. I don't think anything will top that day. You know, you see Final Four, right? Basketball, see how much happiness it is. And to see parents seeing their child do so good, it is the ultimate achievement that you can imagine, you know, that this is what you have strived all your life and here when you achieve it, you know, you feel so good about it, you know, you feel that at least, you know, hard work has paid off, all your dedication, all your commitment. He left it out there on the uh, tennis court and it was really special, I think. He told me, he just, yeah, I, I want the match to come down to me and I just wanted to have that moment. Now that I look back on it, like, wow, I clinched the match in three sets. I'm the match dedicated to my mother a week after she died. And, and I could do nothing else on a tennis score, and that's a, that's, a, that's a storybook ending for me. And to be able to, to win the match is something that, you know, all of us, you know, can remember for the rest of our lives. left is that you know if you work hard and you do things the right way uh, you can you can achieve your dreams when he got to college he kept on working working improving improving he made a complete 360 he matured more you know he understand the game more put team first himself second Harry's the kind of guy that people are gonna follow I mean that's great to have team high GPA Harry's legacy you just kind of have to take the whole package into account. No one will be able to fill his shoes. He found ways uh, to make everything a win. I think he can do whatever he sets his mind to. Whether it's teaching or getting my kids involved, I think it's always gonna be something in my life. I mean, I can't go two days, three days without stepping on a tennis court and, and not feel guilty. I always have that urge like, Harry, somebody else is working harder than you. You have to go out there and get on the court. You're getting this degree here from MSU, but you're really getting a doctor's degree in life. All the yelling that I have done for all the things that I've done will not equal what they have done for me there, you know. It meant a lot. It meant a lot. Thank you.